Recording in progress. Good afternoon again, uh, honorable members, colleagues. Um, we now are ready to start. The time is uh, two minutes past two. I want to welcome all of you, members, all of us on the virtual platform, to welcome our entire support staff with us, members of the media, and members of the public who've been with us from start until today. Um, today is uh, the 21st of August, 2023. We have set this day and agreed on it when we met on the 11th of August. But also this day, even without looking at the date, was etched into our terms of reference that uh, when we're done with our work, we'll have a, a day when we look into uh, and consider the final adoption of our report. So today's meeting's main focus is that main item. Uh, but we do have other items that we're going to consider before that and after, as the agenda would have been sent to you. We will look into the correspondence that might also be speaking to the main item of the adoption of the report. Um, at the end, we'll conclude with our minutes. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to ask uh, Temi Wosu to just share with us what apologies we have. Good afternoon, Chairperson. Good afternoon, members. Thank you, Chair. We have uh, apologies from uh, Dr. Gondwe an apology from uh, Mr. Heron, uh, and Ms. Dana will be joining us later, Chair. That's all I have before me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Gondwe Heron and uh, Honorable Dana, an apology to, to join the meeting late. Thank you for that. Uh, do we accept those apologies, Honorable Members? Accept that, Chair. Uh, thank you. No objections. We we proceed. Um, maybe before I ask uh, Tim Bengosi or Fatima just to lay down the correspondence that we have received, which has been sent to you, um, just from my side to indicate that uh, uh, on the 11th of August, after we finalize uh, the adoption of our draft report on route to the suspended public protector. On the same day, the report would have been sent uh, to the public protector for her comments and she would have been given uh, a, a deadline of the 20, actually the 21st, uh, which is yesterday. Today is the 22nd and I got it wrong when I was saying that before. And so yesterday would have been the last date uh, expected of the public protector to give us comments. Um, we will hear from the correspondence. Uh, I'm going to ask Tim to just, uh, and Fatima to just summarize the correspondence. And then I will, I will then speak thereafter and then invite the members for the discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Trepesin. Uh, I think Chair Mine is just to concur uh, uh, that there's been a communication between uh, the committee and uh, the office of, uh, uh, sorry, the office of the state attorney, as well as uh, the, uh, as well as advocating Mkwemane uh, and also Mutsuaneng bill attorneys. But uh, Fatima Chair will take members through uh, the contents of that correspondence. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Ngoma. Ms. Ibrahim. Good afternoon, Chairperson and members. Chair, I'll start with a correspondence. I will pick up at least from after the last meeting of the committee. Um, so after the committee met that evening, um, the Secretariat then sent the public protector 
a copy of the draft report as adopted and indicated, um, a as you've said, that she had until yesterday um, to make comments, so a period of 10 days. Um, on the 14th of August, there was a letter from the chairperson to the state attorney, Mr. Chawi, um, and this was in response to a letter that Advocate Mukwebani had sent on the 11th of August, and members will recall that letter because they deliberated on the contents um, thereof in respect of her request um, for an extension of time. Um, and there, the, the chairperson um, reiterated that the onus has always been and remains on um, Advocate Mukwebani to do the necessary to secure her legal representation and that the committee had not impeded her in any respect um, thereof. And the chair reiterated um, his position as the chair, that despite the two recusal applications that were submitted against the chair, as chairperson, his job is to ensure that the process is brought um, to finality and, of course, to balance the requirements um, of fairness to the PP on the one hand, but also the obligations of the committee to fulfill its constitutional obligations and public interest on the other. Um, she was informed that the committee had deliberated um, on her letter and was resolute that it had not prevented her from accessing or availing her rights to legal representation and therefore the application or request for postponement um, was not um, agreed to. Chairperson, on 14th of August, there was a letter from the PP to the state attorney, but that uh, we in the secretariat was copied and, and US chairperson as well. Um, she raised uh, the legal implications of the withdrawal of Chani and the fact that she is now without legal representation um, of either attorneys and or counsel. Um, and notes that in respect of the merits of the inquiry, she's been without legal representation since 31 March 2023, which would have been the last day um, in which she gave oral evidence. Um, and she noted in that letter that she had telephonically requested the state attorney to provide her with a list of the attorneys that are on the PPSA panel of attorneys so that she could then choose new attorneys of record. Um, Chairperson, between 14th of August and, and 20th of August, um, there would have been that process for the appointment of new attorneys, or at least we were only informed on the 20th of August, where we received a letter from um, Mutsuaneng Bill attorneys um, informing us that they are the PP's new attorneys of record. Uh, that was sent on the 20th of, of August um, in the evening, and that letter noted that they will meet with their client being the PP in the next 72 hours, but by no later than Wednesday the 23rd, which would be tomorrow. Um, thereafter, they would brief counsel and make contact with the evidence leaders and Chani to access the record, and that they would provide weekly updates in the form of a progress report to the committee and also list any issues of concern that they may have. And they noted the intention to ask counsel once appointed to draft a status quo memo and to advise subject to approval by state attorney or the PPSA for them to obtain same. They also then said that they estimate that they can only meaningfully participate in the next, and I'm, I'm quoting your chair, in the next couple of weeks or so, depending on the nature of the record and the extent of issues arising. Um, so they request that they be granted the necessary space to fulfill the um, obligations. And they state that obviously the deadline um, for the PP to submit representations on the draft report must fall away, even assuming that that is the next step in the process, which is, and they let us say it's possible to say at this stage, they obviously mean to say impossible to say at this stage. So, in, in short, that letter is indicating that they intend to brief counsel, um, but that they would still require some time to familiarize themselves with the record and to get some direction from counsel as to the way forward. And that way forward may or may, may not be uh, comments on the draft report. It, it may take us back to something else, but the letter obviously doesn't go into detail because the attorneys would still wait on counsel to do that status quo uh, report for them. Uh, Chair, the Secretariat did acknowledge receipt of that letter yesterday um, and indicated that it would be tabled 
before the committee today so that the committee can deliberate and, and make a decision on, on that request in that letter um, that they be afforded more time. Uh, Chair, that is the update on, on the correspondence to date. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Ibrahim, and thank you, Mr. Goma. Uh, honorable members, uh, I'm not uh, intending to waste any time. The correspondence that has just been summarized for you, you would have received that correspondence. You would have read it. Uh, it was merely a summary that was being done. And, and therefore, you please acknowledge uh, that in your contributions. I am actually now, with that in mind, inviting members for their own contributions in relation to the main purpose of this meeting, which is about this committee considering um, the, the final report. I must just indicate that what uh, both Mr. Ngoma and Ms. Ibrahim have taken us through, um, as we sit here, we have no comments or submission from the suspended public protector on the, on the report itself. What we have is that correspondence that you have just listened to. Uh, may I invite you, honorable members, uh, to make your contributions? Honorable Nkosi. Um, to be followed by honorable Dagode. Uh, in that order, uh, Honorable Ngosi, the platform is yours. Yep. You can switch off your camera. So that we get a proper, uh, you get proper network. Or other Bungosi, we can't hear you. Just switch off your camera. Chair, I acknowledge the summary. Just, just start, just start, just start again. We, we missed you there. Just switch off your camera as well. Yeah, the camera is off. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Thanks, sir. I'm saying I acknowledge the summary given by uh, Ms. Ibrahim. I've gone through the, the, the correspondence from yourself and from the new attorneys. Oh, sir, I, <clears throat> I think the first thing to note is that for our purposes, um, we, we have maintained that the public protector has legal representation. It is a responsibility to brief legal uh, representation. Uh, two, that <clears throat> in the correspondence, it's clear that were we to consider it uh, positively, it will impact on our own internal deadlines and our obligations to the National Assembly in terms of reporting uh, within reasonable time. I think we've taken too long on this uh, process. And three, Chair, it does look like the attorneys know that they can brief, uh, they can uh, meet with and receive uh, instructions from the PP within 72 hours, but they don't know how long it's going to take them to go through the record. And they're speaking about a few weeks after which they may come back to us and indicate that this is a step that they are taking, they are responding or not responding. I think my considered future is that in view of the fact that we have an obligation to report on, on this matter, uh, that reasonably so, we have granted the PP the opportunity to to comment on the report. She has had, always had legal representation. The committee never impeded her from uh, utilizing legal uh, 
representation of her choice. But, but also that I think, uh, I don't think that the PP acknowledges and even understands the, the severity of the charges uh, that she faces and the implication for herself and that office. And on that basis, Chair, I think the circumstances and the deadlines that we have do not allow us to positively consider the request from the attorneys. My my, my proposal, Chair, is that we acknowledge receipts and explain the process at which we are and the circumstances, uh, but politely indicate that we have an obligation to report and therefore we will proceed to consider the report for additional time at this late stage. The PP's term of office expires in October and this committee should by then have reported to the National Assembly and the National Assembly should have taken a decision. Thank you, Honorable Nkosi. Uh, your, your, your line was uh, breaking a bit there throughout, but uh, we did pick up what you're saying. Honorable Lagode. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. Good afternoon to you and everyone on the platform. Honorable Chair, I want to concur with Honorable Nkosi on his uh, sentiments and also to add that, uh, Honorable Chair, as, the, as this committee, we don't have an open-ended uh, mandate or time to deal with this inquiry. So time is of essence uh, for us. And also to mention that, uh, Honorable Chair, uh, the suspended PP was given enough time uh, to get legal representation and all the processes that we've been through as this committee with regard to assisting her as well uh, to source funds for for her to to utilize in order to 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 get legal representation so i would say we have spent more time uh, in this regard and wasted more time again with a view of ensuring that uh, we do our work diligently so and also in a fair manner we conduct this inquiry in a fair manner so from where we are now we know, Honorable Chair, that uh, Chani Atunis was supposed to to brief a senior counsel. They were given that uh, time after um, the recovery of Mr. Chani. Uh, as we all know that he was once in hospital. So they were given that opportunity to do their work. But their main focus was administrative. Uh, writing letters to and from the committee. So that is what they mainly did in this regard. So with, a, with us, we have come to a point where we are supposed to adopt our report and the report be taken to the National Assembly where a decision will be taken. So we are at that stage now, Honorable Chair. We have given uh, the PP the Audi that she, want, she, 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 she needed. We gave her the Audi and also the courtesy to go through the draft report and and react to it. Unfortunately, that opportunity, uh, the suspended PP missed, missed uh, those opportunities. So where we are now, I would suggest that we note the correspondences that uh, we received as a committee and also adopt this report. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, Honorable uh, Jagude, Honorable Mautwe. 
No, thank you, Chair. Chair, I think you you know our position as far as the report itself is concerned. But I want to remind everybody who seems to have forgotten that the PP has not had a legal rep effectively from the end of March. So everything that happened between March and now happened without the PP's legal team. We've got correspondence from attorneys that were appointed. Uh, they went to hospital, they were sick, they came back. They said they can't continue because of the conduct and the manner in which they were um, handled. They withdrew. The state attorney came upon realization that there were concerns about conflict of interest. They, they withdrew. And only last week, the PP got to get the legal uh, representation sorted. And the letters are before us. So I don't understand when we come here and we say we're disappointed that the PP has not responded. How are she going to respond when she highlighted that she doesn't have the legal rep? The legal rep is now here, Motweni, attorneys. They are saying to you and all of us, Che, give us some time to go through the correspondence. Give us some time to go through everything to familiarize ourselves with this so that we can know what direction we're taking. So I'm not sure if we're expecting that they were supposed to respond to a report that they don't have the background of. I think Chair, we continue to be so unreasonable to the PP. We are in a hush, in a haste to really close this matter and disregard everything else that is before us. We said it previously, Chair, that you have failed all the tests of fairness in this manner. So right now, today, you are caught between a, a rock and a hard place because if you say, let's afford them the opportunity, you are effectively saying, we must start from scratch, from where we left off in March. So that is what we are sitting with. We might not say it, but that is the implication because if you grant them the time now, you are effectively agreeing that everything that happened between March and now should be erased and we start from scratch. Because the reality is that we have not had the participation of the legal rep of the PP from March until now. So this meeting is just called to rubber stamp what has already been pre-concluded, that no, we must continue. When in your introduction, Che, you said the date of today was already on the calendar. It's true. So, but that date when it was said, Che, there were not these circumstances that we find ourselves in. Unless if you are saying it was all planned, that the acting PP will say there's no money and this is how we're going to drag it and all that. Because that's the only explanation one can have to say, yes, all of us, we've got the intended date to finish the matter, but we don't know, we can't preempt what's going to happen in this journey. And it has proven itself that indeed, we could not have anticipated that there's going to be these delays, which were not caused by the PP to start with. So colleagues, the PP could not, and I'm not her advocate, I'm not her ambassador, but I'm just looking at the fairness of the process. If you were to take this matter to court to test the fairness, there's not a chance of us winning it just on the basis of fairness. We have not been fair, colleagues, and we continue not to be fair. Now we are, we've rushed this process to come to the end, and we realize that we can't do anything, we can't maneuver. But our position as the EFF, and it must be recorded, is that today we are saying afford the legal uh, rep of the PP to familiarize themselves and to come and represent the PP in this committee. We can't preempt what they're going to say. They are fair to say we don't know the magnitude of this matter, uh, Chairperson. The, the PP has not responded to the fully to the charges, but we have made already the findings ourselves. It is very unfair, and we stand with our position. But Chair, for this purpose of the meeting, we are saying, let's afford them the opportunity to go through. Let's not rush the process on the basis that we've got a deadline, which was set prior to us finding ourselves in this situation. That will be our submission as the EFF Chair. Thank you.